I think this could go higher right here. Something. Sometimes in the beginning of an idea, you'll, you'll have this kind of melody in your head and it almost doesn't make any sense until, you know, you kind of put those counter melodies in. So like, this is the first idea, it's just it's simple, but then this gives it an instant mood, this counter melody. Right? And then the bass line, simple. You can turn this up an octave higher on the bass just so you can hear it in your homes since it's a little subby. Listen. Uh. I think this, okay, I need to quantize just a little bit. Well, all quantized means, for those, you know, who don't know, is just making it more computer perfect, I guess. Like Daft Punk, half human, half robot. Let's see. So, that, that feels good. The first half is nice. This one's a little early and this one's later, but it's cool. Gives it a little swing. It could be a little bit earlier on this one, just a little bit. Same with that. more groovier. I'm telling you, like, you can't really hear it, but these two sounds together sound really sick. That's the song. That's the idea right there. You know, it's like, as long as you can identify like a main idea, you can put all these sounds and like growls, whips, tricks, like all in the middle. But as long as there's, I mean, for me, that's my process, you know? Um, so yeah, it's like, if you can have like a simple element and you can mute everything else and that's there, to me, that's the song. But yeah, like, I just like these two parts together. They sound really, has an emotion. So. The sound is so simple. If you want to know what it is, it sounds all dreamy and vibey, but it's really the stupidest, simplest sound. L listen, <laughs> just like a vengeance, v vengeance sample, random sound. The little glide, a little verb. <laughs> it's so simple. 
But you know what's cool is like a lot of my sounds end up really simple. But it's all when I when I bounce it to audio, it, you know, that's when I do a lot of my other stuff, you know. It's like getting the patterns, getting everything there, like a really skeleton version. So it almost the sounds aren't even that interesting, but the idea is there, you know, and you can develop the sounds later. That's kind of how I work a lot of the times too. So that's like a basic idea, like so basic. That was about, I would say a little, it was like about an hour, you know, and now this is a solid idea. I'd probably save this and then work on a bunch of other shit today, you know, in a day and do like, you know, an idea an hour like that. And then like go back and listen to all of them and with a fresh brain, a fresh ear and say like, oh, this is, this is cool. This is cooler. You know, a lot of times too is like when you're creating, you're just getting ideas quick. You're getting a lot of ideas out quick. Some things are going to stay exactly the same. But some things you might be like, oh, I love this sound. I love that sound, but I don't like that melody. I want to change the melody. Or you'll be like, oh, I like this. You know, it could be anything. You can apply that to anything in the track, but. There's a lot of mid-range on the bass, which is cool sometimes. But right now, look what I'm going to do here. So, I like how the mid-range sounds here. But when this part comes, I'm just going to automate so there's no mid-range. It's just a sub. You feel me? And then I'm gonna tune it down octave lower. You feel me? Ooh. Check it out. Look what you can do with Ableton. You can go, ooh. You know? Kinda goes from quieter to louder or darker to brighter, depending on how you look at it. But then maybe at the end of it, maybe it just goes wetter, dry wet. Sometimes automating the size does some weird stuff, especially at the end of the measures, you can get little fills. Like that little oh sound. That's what I want to do. I want to take this little, this little thread, the little, the little beat, and I just want to like make it sound like a baby beat in the beginning. You know, just a baby, just learning how to walk for the first time. You know. Like it's just, it's a little shy, you know, it's a little shy. It hasn't got, it hasn't gained its full confidence yet and its strength yet, but soon enough, it will. That's the idea, right? Everything has a story. Every detail has a meaning in a story. I'm just kidding. Not always. It doesn't always have to have a meaning. I'm gonna put a little bit of erosion. You know what's cool about Ableton is Ableton's plugins. Check it out. Simple. Look how cool this is. It's a little erosion thing. You can do a lot of stuff. You can add an actual sine wave, like an actual synthesis coming out of there, which is crazy. <laughs> Ooh, that's kind of interesting. But if I did that, kind of old school Dr. P found. But what if I did that and duplicated the erosion? See, guys, this is, I heard someone say, what's my favorite plugins? I don't really use that many plugins, to be honest. Um, my favorite stuff is literally just, you know, a lot of the Ableton stuff. But if I really needed one, if there was only one plugin in the whole world, actually two plugins, all I need. I don't need anything else is Pro L and Pro Q3, EQ and limiter, <laughs> you know, that's basically it. And you can make anything out of anything, I think. <laughs>